Hey everyone, this is Shepard from TeamworkCast.com here giving a demonstration on charm tables. First off, want to acknowledge some people. MH Views, Roy, Athena, Zombie Delight. Thank you for all of your research and hard work into this area. It is an enormous asset to the community. So you might be wondering, what is a charm table? Why does it matter? Uh, why should I care? And if I do care, how exactly do I go about picking one that's good for me? Well, you are in luck. I've put together a rather comprehensive video here demonstrating exactly that. Simply put, a charm table is a random number that the game uses to determine what sort of charms you will get. Bad tables give bad charms, so let's choose wisely. There are a number of charms, uh, charm tables, and it's been more or less consensus of the community is go for charm table 10. Uh, there are 14 worth choosing. Charm table 1 is good for more variety. If you really, really care, uh, definitely look into the forums on GameFAQs, MindGuard, something awful Reddit, or what have you. Um, in any case, it's a fairly interesting process to go. Um, we need to basically trick the Wii U into thinking that it's a specific time because it's the time that the Wii U uses to determine what your table is going to be. On January 21st, 2012, as long as it's one of these times that you're seeing here when you select a new game, that will be the time, uh, that will be the table that you will get. So the first thing that we want to do is disable the internet on our Wii U. Do that by going into connections under the networking tab Make sure that everything there is deleted or your router is just shut off. Next, go to date and time. Select the time, date to January 21st, 2012. After that, we need to give ourselves about a two minute lead time before we start. So I want to have the time start at 1443 and so I'm gonna start the time now. So I have a stopwatch going on the side by me, but the time right after you hit OK is the time that you're going to be using. And hopefully you'll be able to start up your game in time. I'm giving myself a minute and 43 seconds before I have to hit new game. Interestingly enough, this will also demonstrate the uh, rather bad loading times on the Wii U. The fact that it takes this long to get from a preferences screen to the actual game is a little sad, but that has of course already been demonstrated in many other videos. Uh, need more RAM, Nintendo. I guess maybe that's why uh, the PlayStation 4 has so much RAM loaded in there. Little hiccups like that won't be that much of an issue. And so this little timer that I have running in the corner is of course not the time that I used. This is a little feature that I'm using in video editing and post-processing. I used a stopwatch from, I believe that the, the website's just called stopwatch.com. Of course, any other me method of accurate timekeeping would work as well. A metronome, sundial, if you've got really good vision, anything like that. And so the interesting thing uh, for this tutorial is I really cut it very close, at least uh, in terms of what the, the timer in this video editing software tells me. And so we're going to get ready. And the important thing is that we're just going to hit new game right when it hits 143. Go. Okay. And so once you're in the character creation screen, there's really no pressure. Uh, make your character at your leisure. Uh, the important thing is hitting new game right in that time frame. You have about three seconds to do it, so as long as you're at least somewhat accurate, somewhat quick about it, that'll be it. So the next thing to do, of course, is we're going to verify that we are on the correct charm table. After a certain amount of progress, of which I will demonstrate uh, in just about two minutes, you will unlock the fishing boat. Uh, send your lady off to fish in the Moga Coast just for 30 points. Um, the question's been asked, does using the uh, speed boost for fishing affect it? I don't know. I don't do it. So make a record of what fish you caught. 
go ahead and send her out for a second time. And again, make a record of those fish. And then we're going to go to a website that MH Views has, has created. It's a translation for a Japanese website that basically helps you determine what charm table you have. So go to mhviews.de slash 3u charm slash fish en slash index 2.html. Put in the two patterns of the fish that you received. You'll see here that I just pre populated the ones that I have. Click send. This will take you to a Japanese website that will then show you the possible charm tables that you could have chosen. In this case, we can see that I have charm table 10, uh, two ways in a row with everything else X'd out, confirming that I actually got charm table 10. So right now, I'm gonna go to a bonus reel. This is just a speed run, almost entirely straight through. A uh, little bit of editing here and there, showing what you need to do to get to the fishing verification as quickly as possible. Uh, also gives me a little bit of time to talk a little bit more about charm tables, why they matter, why you should care, or uh, why you shouldn't care too much, but you should at least make sure not to get onto one of the dreaded cursed tables. So the reason why we want to have charm table 10 is because there's a really, really good charm there. It's a charm that gives handicraft skill as well as free element. Sharpness plus one is of course an excellent skill. Uh, getting higher levels of sharpness on weapons gives bonus damage, makes it easier for you to hit monsters, and bounce a lot less, and increases elemental damage, increases KO damage, uh, so on, so on, and so forth. Now, Awakening was a little bit of a dark horse ability in Monster Hunter Tribe. It had some situational abilities, but more or less it was something that you would just use just, just for the fun of it. Nothing really incredibly necessary there. Uh, this time around, there are a lot of weapons, uh, especially the Brachydos weapons, and uh, I think probably some event weapons that if you use Awakening, which is called Free Element now, you'll actually be able to unlock the Slime Element. Or I guess I should probably say Slime Status Effect. You'll see in a lot of the speedrun videos done by the Japanese, so far, I guess actually there were probably some American people or European people that imported the game. This uh, element or status is really effective. Uh, applied enough to a monster, you'll be able to do the equivalent of about, I think, one large barrel bomb's worth of damage, uh, maybe two. Again, I don't know the exact damage, so don't quote me on that. In any case, it's been uh, found to be incredibly effective. So hopefully getting your sharpness plus one, your free element, uh, with that one talisman, as well as the myriad of other really good talismans is good. Okay, so you might be saying, well, I don't care about having the absolute best talisman in the game. Uh, it doesn't bother me. I'm not going to farm enough to ever get it anyways. Uh, what, what does it matter really to me? Well, there are certain types of charm tables that are actually bugged. Uh, interestingly enough, there are a total of 217,000 charms per most standard charm tables. Uh, seems really excessive. But, again, it's a random number generator. It's a seed the game is using to determine uh, various other random effects in the game. Well, there are certain charm tables that are bugged, or as the uh, community calls them, cursed, that have one one hundredth, so one one thousandth, far less the amount of charms uh, available. It's uh, 217. So there seems to be some sort of rounding error or powers error in in regards to these uh, tables. Well, just limiting the charms alone would be bad, but what has been found is that when you have these charm tables, you actually can't get certain rust shards or ancient shards, which limit your ability to get in certain armament sets. So, uh, certainly, it does matter. Even if you didn't care about getting the best talismans, at the very least, figure out what table you're on. Uh, if you're on any one of the other tables that I didn't demonstrate earlier, uh, let's see here if I could find them real quick while I'm recording this. A charms table 11, 12, 15, 16, or 17, you are cursed. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. Uh, so here's a, a little quick trick. This is something that MH View suggests people do, um, not only to help themselves get uh, time advanced for the charm tables, but also, if you're farming, this Kelby quest here can be repeated very quickly. As soon as you have two Kelby horns and you complete the quest, you can immediately complete the quest. Uh, upon quest completion, you're given another two Kelby horns. 
So you can throw those into your backpack and repeat the quest again and complete it in about another 20 seconds. So maybe it's a total of 30 to 35 seconds total each quest completion time. Well, that about wraps it up. Uh, any other questions, please ask them in the comments or go to teamworkcast.com or a definitely poll on one of those esteemed scholars. MH Views has a wonderful video himself explaining the table process. So check him out. Uh, check out Roy's page. I believe he's got uh, translations for some of the best uh, charms in the game. And again, go ahead and visit Reddit. Uh, check, the, check those people out there. They're also doing some great research compiling data. And of course, the Game Facts forums as well. Uh, about the only thing they like talking about. It's not monsters, it is only charm tables. So, hope you enjoyed this video. There will probably be some actual gameplay videos, of course, to follow. Uh, until next time, though, uh, this is Shepard from TeamworkCast.com saying good luck and have a good hunt.